right, guys, I can't stress enough to you that for every extremity you scan, I don't care if it's a knee, a shoulder, a finger, a femur, it doesn't matter. Any extremity you scan, localize, localize, localize. Keep localizing until you have the best imaging planes you can have to start positioning your true scans, okay? So right now, here's the localizers that the scanner gave us. Wonderful, great, it's a great starting point. So here we have a coronal imaging plane. We have a couple of axials, a couple of coronals, okay? One of my biggest pet peeves is when I see someone bring an axial over after seeing this, because they're like, oh, we can see the coronals. So let me just position. And either they'll position like this, or they'll think they're doing great and just start positioning like this. But truly, you have no idea what angle axially and sagittally you're scanning at right now. So. Once you localize, you're going to keep localizing. So we're going to cancel this out and bring over some additional localizers. So I'm going to just go down to one group. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, on the coronal image, I'm going to go perpendicular. And the order in which you do this isn't necessarily important as long as you get opposing imaging planes. So right now, I'm going to go approximately perpendicular to the glenohumeral joint. And I want a slice up through the supraspinatus muscle as well. Okay, so nothing terribly fancy, just an approximation of an angle for a new localizer. Sorry, I have to lower this. Perpendicular to the glenohumeral joint, and at the same angle, which by the way is usually parallel to the supraspinatus muscle, Put a slice of the supraspinatus muscle as well. Shrink your field of view down. You can even add an average if you want. Um, you can even go down your slice thickness because an eight might be a little bit too big for up there. Don't worry about your signal to noise. This is, these are localizers, okay? And apply that. And let's see what we get. So now we have, you can start to see the supraspinatus tendon here. So bring your localizers back down. Again, I just go down to one group. And I'm going to right mouse click perpendicular on the axial image where I see the supraspinatus tendon. And I'm going to plan a coronal oblique parallel with the supraspinatus tendon. Can everybody appreciate that? Mm -hmm. There's a supraspinatus tendon. There's my slice parallel with it. Okay. Then I'm going to add a slice group. I'm going to right mouse click in the middle of the image to make sure that coupled graphics is not selected. So right now it's perfect. You do not want a check mark next to it. So as long as that's the case, the, the slice group that you added, make sure that's still selected. You're going to go to protocol, turn group. That'll make it exactly 90 degrees. So now you have a pseudo-coronal and a pseudo-sagittal. Can everybody appreciate that? Mm -hmm. Fantastic. We're going to run that now. So here's a pseudo-coronal and here's our pseudo-sagittal. And then here's our axial localizer. All right. And if we put our reference lines up, you can see how we're almost there. Okay? We're going to refine it a little better. Drag this down. So while our coronal slice is parallel with our supraspinatus, Come here and turn it a little bit to go a little more parallel with the humerus. And then our sagittal is fine. Our sagittal is pretty much parallel with the humerus here as well.
Does anybody have any questions on what I've done so far? Why did I do the axial scout? Why did I do the coronal and sagittal? And why did I refine the coronal and sagittal? So here's a coronal where you can see the supraspinatus really nicely is the deltoid. And you can see, importantly, the glenohumeral joint. And then here's our sagittal. So right now, we have enough appropriately positioned localizers to position a true axial off of. Okay? Much like when you position a brain, how you look at the axial and the coronal to, to position a sagittal, do the same thing here. Okay? So now we're going to bring over our first set of axial images, which are axial proton density fat set. So if you can't see the images, you can do one of two things. You can right mouse click perpendicular on the image you want it on, or uh, shift to image plane, whichever one you want. You're still going to have to hit perpendicular, so you can go perpendicular first. Again, you bring it over, open it up. You can right mouse click shift to image plane or perpendicular. Okay, so here we are here. So now you guys can appreciate if I go perpendicular to the glenohumeral joint, as well as it being pretty much parallel with the super, supraspinatus muscle as well. Okay, so there's our angle for our axial. You can see how the angle for the axial also corresponds perpendicular to the humeral head on the sagittal image. Okay, if we didn't do that, or if we positioned off of the original, this is not a good representation. See how warped it is? It's not like, oh yes, we're perpendicular to the humeral head here. It's still very warped. So we're gonna position off of the true coronal oblique that we did, angle it how we want it, Now coverage, you want to cover from the top of the AC joint to at least a couple of slices below the glenohumeral joint. Field of view, we just sort of center our field of view to the joint. Your sap band, which direction is our phase encoding direction? Uh, A to P. Okay, which direction does motion go, phase or frequency? Phase. Phase. So if our phase encoding direction is A to P, and I want to prevent respiratory motion, where am I going to put the sap band? I can't hear you. Um, it's okay if you're wrong. I mean, I would assume just right where it is, where the lung is. So is anything here going to be duplicated in the image? Right where my mouse is? cursors. Oh, going. no, because the phase encoding direction isn't going that direction. Phase encoding is going P to A. Oh, I'm thinking. But this is my field of view. Okay. So what anatomy is moving within my field of view? The shoulder itself? Nope. anterior part of the chest. When you're breathing, oh, that's the, chest. the back isn't going anywhere, right? So when you're breathing, what's moving up and down? Oh, yeah, chest. The anterior chest. So putting the sap band here isn't going to do anything for you because the lungs are, your phase is going P to A. So what's moving P to A, P to A within your field of view? The chest. The chest. So that's where you need to put your sap band. Hey Miranda, this scan is three minutes. Sorry, I meant to hit perpendicular on the sat band as well. Perpendicular on the axial image.